15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bannets, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Elo, Elo, Lima, Sabathani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's gone for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it for him to drink, saying, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. The word of the Lord. One of the greatest gifts our ancient fathers and mothers gave us was to preserve four gospels rather than one. Each of the evangelists tells the story of Jesus in a slightly different way, which should silence those who feel they know the one and only way to follow Jesus. And a good way to perceive their differences, their individual themes, is to simply read the beginning of each gospel and the end of each gospel. For instance, tonight, we can see how Matthew and Mark told Jesus' passion. They had only one word from Jesus from the cross. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And they tell the passion as a report of how Jesus was abandoned and left alone. They begin with the Last Supper, a very intimate meal in which friends pledge, promise to one another their faithfulness, sort of a one for all, all for one uh, meal coming together. And immediately, immediately, one of those who, prays, who promise faithfulness goes out to betray him. The, the words which the evangelists use here for betray often is, is uh, translated hand over. He goes out to hand over his friend to his enemies. He betrays him. And what then comes is a series of events in which one person, one group after another, hands Jesus over to a hostile group. Three of the top apostles 
go with him to pray in a very difficult time. And they abandon him in his prayer. This isn't corporate prayer. They're sleeping when he needs them. Very soon, the enemy arrives. And every one of the people who shared his meal runs in fear. These two guys, evangelists, make very clear, they took off in fear. The, they abandon him to the enemy. Well, one does follow down the road at a distance, not out of courage, out of curiosity as much as anything, because in no time, three times, he denies that he even knows the man to whom he promised his faithfulness not that long ago. He abandons him in his need. He's turned over to the Jewish authorities, both religious and political. These are people who claim to know the one and only way to be God's people because they are, after all, the sons of Abraham. And they turn over, Jesus, to the Roman authorities. Roman authorities who are forever promising that they will bring eternal peace to the world because of their great laws. And by their laws, as they make very clear in the scriptures, they know Jesus is innocent. But they turn him over to the soldiers to be tortured and executed. They turn him over to death. And I read then where it picks up. It's very stark in, the, in uh, Mark's account, as in Matthew's account. Everybody, everybody ridicules him. There's no good thief in these two. These two. Everybody ridicules him and says, if you are God's person, then why doesn't he send Eliza in his fiery chariot and rescue you, then we'd be impressed. They have all abandoned him. And it's then when most of us say, most of us who read or hear this story say, well, at least God doesn't abandon him. And then he screams from the cross, not father, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? St. Paul says that we preach Christ crucified, and what he means is, if we really want to understand the faith, if we really want to understand life, we must begin at this point. Dostoevsky, I think it's Dostoevsky. I've been away today from my computer. You, when you get my age, you're dependent upon your computer. But I think it was Dostoevsky who said, hell is the absence of God. That's what this is. Hell. I think mo a lot of us here, maybe every one of us here, understand what Matthew and Mark are trying to say. We know that the most loving words one can make to another, I will be with you always. I promise I don't only love you, I will be faithful to you always. And perhaps the most horrible thing which can happen to any of us 
is when the person who makes that promise abandons us. And it normally happens when we're in trouble and need them more than ever. When we have been saying to ourselves, I can get through this if only you will be here with me. And they flee. So we understand what's being said here. We've been there. It speaks to us. We understand that, or many of us understand that hell. Quite frankly, I've not suffered that much with this type of thing. Those around me have been faithful, I, more than I deserve. But I can still sense it in others who have been abandoned. That's where Good Friday leaves us. And then Easter comes to say, no, God was there. He suffered hell for us, but God was there and raises him. And he who was abandoned comes back to those who abandoned him with words of hospitality and love and forgiveness and says, lo, I'll be with you always to the ends of the world. Words of faithfulness. And those of us who hear them say, I can do it if you'll be here with me. I can do it because I realize God never abandons me, even when I do not hear him talking, even when I think he's gone. Because I know Jesus, I know he's here. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.